بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise due to Allah may he send his prayers and his blessings upon our Prophet Muhammad his family his companions and those who follow him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has blessed us with this book Al-Quran and he sent it as the final book sent down upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he has described this book as being a book that guides us to that which is best and it's a blessed book Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says وَهَذَا كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ مُبَارَكٌ فَاتَّبِعُوهُ This is a book that we have sit down which is blessed so follow it and in another verse he says to us كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ إِلَيْكَ مُبَارَكٌ لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ A book that we have sent down to you which is blessed so that they can reflect upon its verses. So the purpose of sending down the books and sending the messengers is for guidance for us to show us how to live our lives and so forth. And therefore it's upon us to study the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to derive lessons from it to have a relationship with this book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Sahaba radiallahu anhum would study the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they would read it on a daily basis and this is important for us as well so bi ta'ala by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will begin studying one of the surahs the chapters of the Quran surah al-hujurat the rooms or the chambers and this surah or this chapter of the Quran is one of the important chapters because there are many etiquettes in this chapter, many lessons for us to learn and to implement in our lives during these times that we're living in now. So let's begin by reciting the verses that we will study in Allah Ta'ala. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says <coughs> after A'udhu Billah Min Shaitan Rajeem says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تُقَدِّمُوا بَيْنَ يَدَيْ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ This verse begins with the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the believers. He says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And Ibn Mas'ud رضي الله عنه, he says that when you hear this command or this call, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Then you should listen carefully. Because it's either a command to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from him or it's something that's prohibited from, for us to do. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, يَا أَيُّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تُقَدِّمُوا بَيْنَ يَدِيهِ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Do not put yourselves before Allah and his messenger. And then he says, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ Have fear or consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for indeed he is hearing and he is knowing. This verse is very important because it teaches us how we should deal with the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the commands of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We live in time, these times that we're living in now, we find that many people have their personal views, personal opinions concerning issues that are related to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you find people who may say that, I think that this should be the case, or some may say, I don't see a problem in doing so and so. Or others may say, this is my opinion concerning this issue. However, I'm not giving a fatwa or Islamic verdict. However, they are giving their opinion about something that's related to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no one has a say with if the Quran has said something, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said something about an issue or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For indeed, even the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to us, وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ That he doesn't speak based on his desires, but rather it's revelation revealed to him. So anything that's related to this religion from the Prophet himself even is revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's very important that we do not say anything or we do not do anything or have any opinion or thought that goes against that which comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's upon us to ask those people of knowledge if we're ignorant of something and make sure that this is based on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us and his prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after saying let qad yubayni yadi illahi wa rasooli do not put yourselves before Allah and his messenger he ends the verse by saying wa attaqu allaha inna allaha sami'un alim he says fear Allah be conscious of him for indeed he is hearing well he's all hearing he's all knowing and when we look at the Quran we find that any time we find a name or attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we find a verse that ends with one of these names, we will find that there is a connection always. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he ends this verse by saying that he is hearing. <clears throat> he is informing us, reminding us that he hears our statements. What do we say? These opinions, whatever they may be, Allah hears them. And he is knowing, he knows what we say, what we do. So be conscious of him. Inna Allah sami'un alim. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the following verse, Ya ayuhal ladheena amanu, la tarfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawt al-nabi, wa la tajharu lahu bilqawli, tajahri ba'dikum li ba'din, an tahbata a'malukum wa antum la tashirun. This verse is about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how the Sahaba should address him, how they should raise their voices, or how they should speak, when they speak to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not raise your voices over the voice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And do not speak to him in the way that you speak to one another. <clears throat> Why? He says, an tahbata amalukum. It may be that these actions or doing this, speaking in this way, it may destroy, it may make your actions invalidate, it may invalidate your actions without you even knowing. And this shows up the danger of what we say or what we do in general. Because in many cases, a person may make a statement and it's something that's not good or it's dangerous, a dangerous statement. However, the person may look at it as being something small. It's not a big issue. Who cares or what's the big issue of saying such and such, even though they know it's wrong. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse, he's saying to them, he's commanding the believers, he says, do not raise your voice over the voice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And therefore, anything that's, or any action that we do, which is a form of respect to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we know it's an obligation. And anything that may be a form of disrespect to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is prohibited. We have to be careful and we have to watch out what we say. Even when we hear the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the traditions and the sayings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, also we have to be conscious of how we behave. The scholars of Islam, when they would narrate the hadith or traditions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, some of them would dress in a certain way. They would sit, they would prepare themselves. Why? Because they are narrating the statements or the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as we mentioned, at the end of the verse, Allah says, what? وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تشعرون. You may not be conscious, you may not be aware of these statements or the danger of them and what they may do. So we have to be conscious of what we say and what we do. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَغُضُّونَ أَصْوَاتَهُمْ عِنْدَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ مْتَحَنَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ لِلتَّقْوَىٰ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَأَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ And this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he describes or he speaks about those who, what? They lower their voice in the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he praises these people and he mentions their, their reward, showing us the way we should speak or the way the Sahaba should speak when they speak to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Such as Abu Bakr and Umar and other Sahaba radiallahu anhum. They respected the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were conscious of how they addressed him, how they spoke to him. He says, Inna ladina ghudduna swatam. Verily those who lower their voice in the presence of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam those are the people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has opened their hearts or their chests for receiving a taqwa, piety. So these are the pious people. Or, or we can say that this verse means that Allah has tested them and realized, or they tested them and they were suitable or they were ready to receive or to be the people of a taqwa. Those people who what? Who lowered their voice when they spoke to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was with them, when they approached him, when they addressed him, they lowered their voice. What does Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala say about them? لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَأَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ He praised them, they are people of taqwa. And not only that, he says that they, are, they for them will be forgiveness. 
and a great reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this shows us again, the first verse mentioned that those who raise their voice, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that maybe their deeds may be destroyed and so forth. And this group or these people who lower their voice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says for them will be forgiveness and a great reward. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions a verse, the following verse about the people who came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam when he was in the rooms of his wives. When he says, min akfaruhum la ya'qilun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse, he mentions a group of people who came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and they called for him, raised their voice, O oh Muhammad, O oh Muhammad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says about these people, these people who are calling you from behind the doors or behind the chambers or the rooms. He says, أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ Most of them have no understanding. They have no sense. They have no intelligence, no intellect. Because of what? Their behavior. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَلَوْ أَنَّمْ صَبَرُوا حَتَّى تَخْرُجَ إِلَيْهِمْ لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ It was better for them to have patience. They had patience and waited until you came out to them. It would have been better for them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he speaks about this group of people who didn't have respect for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in terms of the way they addressed him or they spoke to him or they called him by mentioning his name without even saying, for example, the messenger of Allah. And also they didn't have patience. And this is one of the problems that we have today. Many of us are hasty, we're in a hurry to do things. Even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He praised those who have patience and encouraged us to be patient. And He told us that those who are patient, they will get their reward in full or fully. So we should have patience. These people, they didn't have patience. And they didn't wait for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we find that He mentions or He Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about these people and their negative action of calling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he criticized them. So it's upon us to have patience and to know how we speak and when we speak about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, anything we need him to have uh, respect. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُنَادُونَكَ مُرَاعِكَ جَرَاتِ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ And then he follows that by saying that if they had patience, it would have been better for them. وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ صَبَرُوا حَتَّى تَخْرُجَ إِلَيْهِمْ لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ And he ends the verse by saying وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ And also we find in this verse, we find the end of this verse is related to the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ And this is a reminder that if we fall into mistakes, even if we do something that's wrong, then we should always be reminded that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's forgiving, He's merciful. These are one of His names and His attributes. So the door of mercy or the doors of forgiveness are always open. No person sins and they should always repent and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. For indeed, it's part of our nature to commit or fall into mistakes. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, كُلُّ بَنِي آدَمَ خَطَّاءٍ وَخَيْرُ الْخَطَّائِينَ التَّوَّابُونَ All of the children of Adam commit mistakes, or they continue to commit mistakes, however, or to sin. However, he says the best of those who sin are those who what? Repent, who always repent and continue to repent. Because this is the nature of human beings. They have shortcomings and they fall into mistakes. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he ends this verse by saying and reminding them that even if they had done something wrong, their behavior was wrong. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is forgiving and he is merciful. So these verses, these first verses of this book, uh, of this chapter of the Qur'an, uh, as we can find, they address many things and they teach us many things. As we mentioned that one of the most important things is to know how we deal with the book of Allah and the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the teaching of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and also how we should deal with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in terms of our responsibility towards the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his sunnah. And also it speaks about uh, the way or how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala criticized these people 
because of their behavior with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So these verses remind us, should be a reminder to all of us about the importance of learning and learning our religion and implementing it and following the guidance from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala and from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we ask Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala to give us an understanding of his book and make us of those who put the book of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala and the teachings of the book of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala first and the teaching of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before their opinions and their views or anything. And وَأَخْرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ